It's Father's Day weekend, and for many dads, it's a tough one. My wife says that she loves Billy, and I believe she does, but I'd like to know what law is it that says that a woman is a better parent simply by virtue of her sex. Wow. How's it feel? Good. Okay, keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> About half of all American marriages end in divorce with kids caught in the middle. Dustin Hoffman's Oscar-winning performance in Kramer vs. Kramer took us for a ride on an emotional roller coaster. As its mission statement, the nonprofit National Parents Organization seeks better lives for children through family court reform that establishes equal rights and responsibilities for fathers and mothers. And joining us from Boston is its founder and chairman, Dr. Ned Holstein. Ned, welcome. Terrific to be here. Thank you. Doctor, these numbers that I'm about to read you uh, are stunning. Uh, according to the Census Department, six, uh, children raised by single parents account for 63% of teen suicides, 70% of juveniles in state-operated institutions, 71% of high school dropouts, 75% of children in chemical abuse centers, 85% of those in prison, 85% of children who exhibit behavioral disorders, and 90% of homeless and runaway kids. These numbers sure yes. seem to make the case that uh, it's important for children of divorce to maintain uh, relationships with both parents, functional relationships. Is it your experience that conversely, kids who have those relationships do better in terms of these woes I just ticked off? I think it was H.L. Mencken who said there are lies, damn lies, and statistics. Uh, but these unfortunately happen to be pretty accurate, not to mention the vast majority of these uh, young mass shooters, who most of whom have uh, lacked any real relationship with their fathers. Uh, and what we do find is that the children whose parents have separated or, or divorced, but who have lots of time with both their parents, do way better in life and on all of the kinds of measures you just mentioned. You know, I hadn't thought about that mass shooters thing, but you're right. Every time one of these gun nuts strikes, this seems to be a common thread. Uh, the split couples who do make it work, how do they make it work? They have to start by understanding that both parents are important to the kids. The kids love both parents. Uh, they can't stand to, uh, to, to lose, effectively lose contact with a parent. It hurts them very, very deeply, right in the heart, uh, and they act out. And so if the parents understand that, instead of being caught up in their own vindictiveness or anger, um, that should motivate them. But unfortunately, the family courts create a winner and a loser dichotomy and uh, basically seduces people into having custody battles because if you win the custody battle, you get everything. You get control over the children. You, get, you can take revenge on your ex by not letting them see the children. You get the child support. Often you get alimony. You get the house. You don't have to move, et cetera, or the apartment. And um, so, uh, you know, so why not? What human being would rather be a loser than a winner? We all want to be the winner. So custody battles ensue, and they carry their own long-term bitterness. And all of these things add up uh, to the detriment of the child. And so we're setting the incentives in exactly the wrong way. The incentive is, why don't you two come in here and have a big battle and we'll figure out who wins? Whereas National Parents Organization offers shared parenting, which says, why don't you two come in here, stop worrying, you're both going to still be parents, you're still both going to have rich and deep relationships with your kids. And uh, let's just sit down here and work out the problems instead of trying to be a, trying to be a winner and to, um, to be victorious over uh, your ex-partner whom you now feel very vengeful towards. So just by setting the incentives differently, shared parenting leads to better outcomes for everybody in the family. Not, most importantly, the children, but people tend to think of it as something that's, that fathers want. They want father's rights. It's actually also better for moms. They don't have to be stuck in the role of giving 90% of the child care. Uh, look, um, we will never close the gender pay gap unless we have shared parenting. Because if you have about a third of all mothers as single parents, 
that who has the energy very few people do to pursue a rigorous demanding career that pays well and also take care of the children 80 or 90 percent of the time so uh, this has benefits for everybody it's common sense and not only common sense it's supported by the research and the children love it well uh, these kids are not just sensitive but they're also very observant and very smart and you can't spin them telling them hey you get two sets of christmas presents it just doesn't wash right that's right it does not it does not wash you know this is rt so can i read something from tolstoy that is so beautiful about this <laughs> this is about a child about eight or nine years old who is desperately missing one of his parents and the child is Seriosa, and this masterpiece of course is Anna Karenina. In this case he's missing his mother, not his father, but it works both ways. So he'd, he would be taken out for walks in the park and he would, Tolstoy wrote, every woman of full graceful figure with dark hair was his mother. At the sight of such a woman, such a feeling of tenderness was stirred with him, within him that his breath failed and tears came into his eyes and he was on the tiptoe of expectation that she would come up to him would lift her veil that she would uh, that all her face would be visible she would smile she would hug him he would sniff her fragrance feel the softness of her arms and cry with happiness just as he had one evening lain on her lap while she tickled him and he laughed and he bit her white ring covered fingers oh, now wow. that's that's Tolstoy. We tend to and think that he can uh, say it. Yeah, we tend to think of uh, the contemporary uh, marriage as breaking down, but as you said, uh, it's Tolstoy. Hey, uh, the divorce. That, in that was Dust a divorced couple, but that that child that child will feel the same way about his or her father too. Exactly. The uh, divorce industrial complex does a brisk business and marketing messages like the one you're about to hear speak to vulnerable consumers. Listen. Preserving your relationship with your kids is a top priority for us. So is the need to protect the assets and income that represent your life's work. We're committed to helping you through a very difficult and perilous process. Now, how have the courts, which you mentioned before, and the legal system generally, which is a for-profit enterprise, made it difficult for parents to enjoy equal rights and responsibilities. Well, really, in a lot of ways, the, the first way uh, is by failing to give joint physical custody of children uh, to the parents and pretty much automatically cookie cutter, rubber stamp, uh, giving sole physical custody to mom and dad gets every other weekend. Now there's a growing number of exceptions to that, but it's still in the single digits or low double digits in terms of percentages. And so that's the first way. The second way is <clears throat> there's no enforcement of that. Even that little meager every other weekend does not get enforced. The guy can show up for 10 weekends in a row uh, when he's supposed to have the kids. Nobody's home, knocks on the door, nobody answers, no explanation. He goes to court he asked for the court to enforce its own order, which the court has said that this is, I don't agree with every other weekend being in the best interest of the child, but that's what the court has said, but they won't enforce it. So that's number two. Number three, at the federal level, we are spending $5 billion per year to enforce the, uh, the payment of child support. Okay, as far as it goes, we were paying 1% of that amount to support the fathering, uh, the father, fatherhood, so to speak, or the, the relationship of the father, the non-custodial father with his children, 1% of what we're paying. So in other words, the message there is, well, the only thing that matters is the money, and the other stuff doesn't really matter much. Uh, there's also, the law does enforce, by the way, mom's parenting time. Just try being a non-custodial parent who brings the, the kids home late from your meager one and a half days of quote visitation with that child just try bringing that ho that child home the next morning instead of sunday night and you'll see what the law has in store with you for you uh, here's another one that people don't know about about over four, over 40 percent of the kids in the united states are born out of wedlock the government wants very much to uh determine somebody 
to what they call established paternity, which means find somebody to pay child support. They have a whole system worked out with every hospital in the country that has an obstetric ward to uh, get into the hospital while the newborn baby is still there, while the mom is still there, and sign the form that says, yes, I'm the father, because once he does that, he'll have to start paying child support. Now, here's the interesting part. Uh, of course, this man has been told by his girlfriend that he is the father, so right. he's joyful. And he's not, there's no, there tends not to be much skepticism, or many of them, um, English is their second language, or they're teenagers, they don't know what they're doing. They sign the form. The interesting thing is the government discourages a DNA test to see whether that's actually the dad. And so uh, they don't care whether it's actually the dad. All they care about is get a signature on the form so that child support will be paid by somebody. And they don't care wh whether it's the right person. I'll give, I'll give, I don't want to turn this into a speech, but I'll give one example that really throws that into relief. There was a case a few years ago in which, uh, and it's not a divorce case, a, a couple has a baby, mom's in the maternity ward, she gives birth, and a, about a day later, they, they discharge mom and the baby. And about three hours after uh, the mom and the baby and the father are discharged, and go home, they discover that they made a mistake and they sent the wrong baby home with mom. And the hospital instantly corrected its mistake, called up, apologized, Ugh. Ugh. retrieved the baby, got the right baby, etc. But they also offered a $50,000, um, uh, not a judgment, but a $50,000 settlement to preclude any possible lawsuit. So in other words, a three-hour mistake of sending a child home with the wrong mother Ugh. was worth $50,000, but every day we're sending babies home with the wrong fathers, who people who are not actually their fathers. Wow. Uh, because and, and they won't do the DNA the test. The government cares. discourages the DNA test. You know, in real life, it yes. doesn't sound nearly as comical as that episode from the Dick Van Dyke Show. Thank you, Dr. Ned Holstein from the National Parents Organization. I appreciate your time. Thank you. And that is the big picture. If you missed any part of this week's show, or if you would like to share it, thanks in advance. You can, where you'll find all our shows, at youtube.com slash thebigpicturert. Watch anytime, anywhere, on any device. And on Father's Day, if you still have yours, give the lug a hug. And if you don't still have your dad, I bet you have found, as I have, that he never really leaves you. I'm Holland Cook in Washington, back next week, and on Twitter in the meantime. Question more.